Hi everyone and welcome to Cooking with Liam episode 4. In this episode uh, we've got a recipe that's been provided by fan of the show and my mother uh, Karen. Uh, shout out to Karen. Uh, she's given us a recipe for beef goulash using the slow cooker. Once again I'm joined by Kat Bison on the camera operator lady duties. Uh, how you doing Kat? I'm interested in how this is going to go. Well, we've used the slow cooker once before, so we're going to be fine. Uh, now, I don't know where Mum got this recipe from. I don't know if she's written it. It's not as clear as some of the other recipes in some places. And we don't have all the ingredients, and we also don't have some of the right ingredients. But as... I think you're being overdramatic, but go on. As Chef Liam always says, um, this is more of a roadmap than a you know, strict set of instructions. So just follow it the best you can and hope for the best, uh, which is what we're going to do. So step one, going to wash our hands. Always important to wash your hands before you cook uh, with a bit of soap. And then we're going to get straight into it. We've got to do a bit of cooking, then we'll put it in the slow cooker. Then we'll be back later to finish it all off, bring it together and do the taste test, which, uh, Kat, is that your favourite part of the show? Yes, eating is the favourite part of the show for me. When it tastes good. I'm sure it will. Well, the last slow cooker recipe was a bit iffy. So, uh, step one, we need to toss 800 grams of beef in seasoned flour. So what we've got here, it should be cubed beef as well. Or in the recipe it says 800 grams of stewing steak in cubes. So what we've got here is two packets and these are 500 grams each. So if you do some maths there, that's more than what we need. <laughs> Good so, maths, Liam. There we go. So I'm just going to very carefully use the knife without to open the packets without touching... Um, any of the, the meat inside, and that knife is then good for using at other times, probably. Um, so one of these will be fine. So we've got the the scales here. Um, it's got zero on at the moment, so that's what you want. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you drop the bit of paper in? Yeah, and it just... You can, you can fish it out. There we go. Right, so that's 487 grams. That's a false economy, that is. Yeah, well, that's what you get in this day and age, isn't it? Right, so I don't need all of this. So I'm going to very carefully try and not get all of it. Why don't you use like a fork or something? I'm trying it this way. It's going really well. Yeah, it's all like stuck to, there we go. I need a bit more than that. <laughs> well, not all of it. <laughs> right, that's too much. Um, what's the best? Should I just hand it? If you can, if you want. Be a bit grim, but... Well, I've just washed them, so it's fine. No, I mean grim because of touching red meat. It's not very nice. It feels quite cold. Yeah. Um, let's see, how are we doing? We're down to 832. What? 810. What? Oh, yeah, it's 800. 800 isn't it? Yeah. 798. That'd be, won't it? Yeah. Alright. Um, I'm going to pop this back in the fridge. Do I need to wrap it up in some cling film or something? Uh, just leave it for now. We'll sort I'll do it later. Out. I'm going to wash these hands again because I've just got red meat all over them. Um, Chef being top tip when you are trying to put meat into a bowl, um, just try and be a bit careful with it. Maybe um, use like some some form of utensil, like yeah, a utensil, like I suggested, or or even your hands. You could just fish it out with your hands. Um, but what we've just witnessed there is this um, tendency where red meat, it's uh, it likes to stick together. It kind of like to stay as one sort of mass. Um, so you're gonna have to just dig in and and split it up a little bit, really. Um, Chef Liam, top tip right there for you. So, moving on. Come with me, Catherine. Um, right, next step, we need to add 
two tablespoons of plain flour with some salt and pepper. So I've got Careful some plain flour that. here. Don't worry about that. Uh, I've got, I'm going to use this tablespoon. Any objection? No. Two. Now, it doesn't say if they should be heaped or not, but my gut is telling me they should be. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do two heaped tablespoons. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Have you turned the scales off? No. Nah. Okay. Doesn't matter, does it? The well, battery might die. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, then I'll turn one. I'm just going to move this. Just keep hitting it. I just turn it off? Just hold it, do you? You should just yeah, be able to press it. it. Um, so that's that done. Bit of salt and pepper to season it. Here's the salt. That's plenty, that's, lovely. That's lovely. Um, where's the pepper? Should be up there as well, just maybe. Oh yeah, it's hiding behind the uh, olive oil. Uh, probably enough? Yeah. Probably. Uh, and then toss it. So, uh, Kat, any recommendations <laughs> for how you would toss beef in, in flour? I know you'd get stuck at this part. Do I just sort of like... N no, well no, that's not going to, no. Use a... I'm tossing it. Use a um, spoon to kind of stir it around in the bowl. Yeah. Or you could put a plate over the top, turn it upside down and give it a shake. Spoon sounds better. Yeah. It's going to be honest. The plate sounds like there's a lot of room for error. So and I just, just use this spoon. Yeah, I don't know what you're playing at getting a new spoon out. No. Just try your best to coat it with all the flour. So if you want to come and have a look at how I'm doing this. Oh yes, a little close up. And this is just tossing the beef in the flour, probably. Yeah. This is, this is how the professionals do it, right? Probably not, but it's how no, we no, do no. it. No, no, it, no. It, it probably is. Let's be, let's, let's be honest okay. with ourselves. Yeah. Um, and what are you looking for here? Do you want every bit of beef to be absolutely coated or do you just I want a bit it's... of a like dusting like what I we've think, got here? I think it's okay if it's just a, a dusting. Just a dusting. Yeah. All I right. don't really know, but... I'm well, we think that's okay, don't we? Yeah, sure. Right, right. job done. Next step. In a large pan, heat oil and fry the meat until lightly browned. Just a, then, just a, a tip. Um, the pepper, you probably want to cut yeah, that. Yeah, I was, uh, let me, let me, what was I going to say? Then we add the onions and green pepper. And what I was about to say is I'm going to cut the green pepper first so it's ready to be added. Perfect. So I'm not getting the, the beef brown. So with these instructions, one Chef Liam top tip, um, if you read ahead, you might see like, oh, there's opportunities here to to streamline. This is literally what I told you like twice, is read the whole recipe before you start. And now it's a Chef Liam top tip, you heard me <laughs> first. No, you didn't. So, I'm kind of, I can probably use this knife that I cut the beef meat mm. open with, right? Yeah, as long as there's no beef on it, I guess. Do you want to? I mean, I'm not really going to be able to tell. It looks fine to me. Okay. Now. This this says uh, one green pepper. Mm. These are the peppers that Kat's provided me. <laughs> I, um, ordered, I ordered mixed peppers because we have chilli later this week. And I thought a green pepper came in mixed, but it turns out it doesn't. Yeah. If, if there's any colourblind watchers, what we've got here is a yellow, orange and red pepper. So which one is closest to green? Uh, yellow? Yeah, I was going to say yellow. I read somewhere... And maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but the different colours of pepper is different ripeness. Yeah, I'm sure I've heard that too. So, I don't know how it works, but I'm going to assume that green is the least ripe and red is the most. And therefore I'm going to think yellow is the closest to green as being less ripe than like orange and red. Okay. But that is all just wild assumptions. Do not take any of that as fact. Um, now, Chef Liam, top tip here. When you're cutting peppers, um, you want to cut the end off first. Okay. I think Chef Liam is realising that knife was probably not the most practical for cutting peppers. It's fine. Okay. 
Uh, what you want to do is, as you can see, I've still got some of the end in there. Um, so you just want to really sort of dig that out, I assume. I want to dig this bit out. Okay. Ow. You're just cut yourself. Yeah, the knife came through the end of the pepper oh. and cut me. Just pull it out of your hand. That hurt. Do you want, is it bleeding? I don't want you bleeding on my dinner. I don't think it's bleeding yet. Okay. It's covered in pepper though, so it's hard to tell. Yeah. But yeah, so one, well, here's a Chef Liam top tip. Don't um, cut yourself. <laughs> when you're cutting peppers, just be careful because the knife can very easily just go through the pepper like that. And if that's where you're holding it, like I was, um, you could cut yourself. Brilliant. So, Thanks, Liam. So we don't need any of this bit, do we? No, just scoop it out. I've scooped it all out. Okay. Now I'm just going to... I think just roughly chop them into, like, chunks, and then we'll see if they need cutting down any smaller. I'm going to cut them into chunks. Yeah. Like, that sort of size chunk, I think, is going to be perfect. I mean, I have probably half that. Okay, well, we'll see. But it's up to you. Well, what happens to pepper when it cooks, Catherine? It softens. It softens. Does it ever shrink in size? I mean... Because some foods do. Probably not by a lot. Right, so so uh, of the foods that do shrink in size when they're cooked, pepper isn't one of them. Is that what we're saying? I don't know. Why are you making this more complicated? It's easy. Is it? Yeah. Cooking with Liam is all about how to make cooking easier. And also, you know, we learn along the way. We learn some do's, we learn some don'ts. So cut this in half. Oh, that size is was okay. Well, You've just got ones like this that are a lot bigger. That's pretty big. Oh, that's pretty big. Oh, I'll just cut in the bigger ones down. Again, for those that have just tuned in, um, I know it should be a green pepper, but it's not. And Kat says deal with it. <laughs> I don't want to do that bit. Okay. I think that's fine now. What we've got there. This bit, we're what's, not doing nothing what's, with. What's wrong with this? Oh yeah, I can cut that one up a bit. Yeah. It's just a bit big. Uh, I don't know how many this serves, but probably plenty for two. Uh, so that's that. I'm going to wash my hands now, once again. Um, and then we'll look at what the, the next step is. Now, we don't need the pepper immediately for our next step, but we do know that we're going to need it soon. And what we didn't want to do is brown the meat and then have to flap around with cutting the pepper once the meat is brown. You know, we want to just chuck the pepper straight in once we get to that stage. Um, always be careful. Now, if you are uh, following along and you're using knives and stuff, um, Chef Liam, top tip, make sure there's an adult at present. Um, if you need help, ask. Are you saying this because I had to watch over you cutting the pepper? And no. you still managed to cut yourself. No. Um, I'm saying it because anyone of any age, creed, race, sexual orientation should be able to cook. Um, and I'm trying to make it easy for them. How inclusive of you. Cooking with Liam is a very inclusive show. Uh, so, I'm now going to start heating the oil and frying the meat till it's slightly browned. And what I need is two tablespoons of cooking oil. Now, I'm not going to use this, this tablespoon for it. I'm going to get a new one out. Any okay. objections? No. While I'm doing this, shout out to, um, to Ellie and Dave, two fans of the show. Um, they've been in touch lately to say how much they enjoy watching Cooking with Liam together. Um, so I don't think they've, they've tried cooking any of the recipes yet, but if you do, let us know how it goes. Any other fans of the show that want to get in touch, um, just leave a comment on YouTube. Easy. So that's that. You've got a bit of thread on you that's bothering me, but I fixed uh, it. Thank you so much. What colour was the thread? White. I wonder where that came from. Um, because I've not worn anything white over this, so mm. hence my confusion. The sleeve is also bothering me. 
Happy okay, now? much better. Good. Professionalism is what we aim for with cooking with Liam. Yeah, we wait till we're 15 minutes in to check yeah. your outfit. So I'm going to heat the oil up now. Normally, uh, in these recipes that we follow, it kind of says like, oh, heat on a high heat, heat on a medium heat. This one doesn't. I'm going to do medium. Yeah. Instinct. We think that's about a medium heat, don't we? That's quite high. That's a bit high, maybe. There we go. Now it's medium. And I'm just going to move the oil around the pan a little bit. Well, not the pan, this is a wok. Um, fun fact, if you're watching. Uh, woks are often used in oriental cooking, aren't they? Yes, Asian, like. Um, and I'm going to use this as my utensil of choice for moving the meat around okay so i'm going to get this from here into here right don't put the spoon in with no it. i'm going to take the spoon out obviously you say obviously but it's obvious oh it's the best way of doing this just tip it in it yeah there's some flour sat at the bottom oh no i mean <laughs> could have done that better couldn't you i could have done it worse though yeah I suppose. at least all of the meat went in yeah just about don't worry about that there you go. Now we're cooking. Uh, right, you've done that thing again that we pointed out in episode one where because you're left-handed, you've put the hand, handle on this side, but I'm not left-handed. So we'll swap sides. I guess. Now just your arms in the way. Yeah, yeah. There we go. I'm not having to awkwardly hold the, the handle. I mean, I had to say to Ellie um, that she made a good point after she made that point. And you don't like saying that, do you? Not to Ellie. No. No. She's going to dine out on that for months. Absolutely months. Uh, right, so now we just mess around with this until it's brown, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, okay. Don't know how long that's going to take. So, cooking with Liam here in the kitchen. Cooking with Liam. Welcome back. Uh, so I've been cooking my meat here until it's lightly browned. Uh, so it's not all lightly brown, as you can see, but a lot of it is. Um, and Kat thinks that it's fine. I'm guessing it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I think some of this more red bits, maybe just a couple of minutes, but we've still got some more cooking to do uh, in, this, in this wok, so. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I'm going to leave that like that for now. Uh, so, the next step is to add... So you're supposed to have one large onion that you chop up and put in. Uh, again, there's errors that were made and we don't have that. So what we've got instead is a bag of onion here. Now, how much of this do you think will make one large onion? Well, quite, quite a bit. All right, let's When you start. know what a large onion looks like, take a guess. <laughs> I'd say that's probably like a large onion. What do you Yeah, oh, shit, definitely is now. Yeah, <laughs> now we've got a really large onion. <laughs> and also the peppers. So I'm going to get rid of those bits that I don't want. Let's maybe move them so they're not right on the edge. Yeah, yeah. And then here we go. Straight in, straight in, the onions and peppers, all in, um, and then I'm just going to mix that around a little bit. Do it carefully because the wok's quite full. It's quite what? Full. You don't full. want to start flicking stuff. Oh yeah, no, no. no. Uh, always be careful when you're cooking in a wok. Um, last thing you want to do is accidentally flick the food that you're cooking out of the wok because then you've got a big mess to clean up. Haven't you, Catherine? Yeah, I do it sometimes. Often. All right, so once once that's in, we've got to cook nice. it for a further one to two minutes. Now, we are using frozen onion, so is that going to make a difference to the cooking times? Oh, no, not not when it's going in the slow cooker for several hours. All right, what I am going to do is quickly wash my hands, because I just touched pepper. Um, and you want to have clean hands when you cook it. Okay. How's it looking, Catherine? 
It's looking good, it's smelling nice too. Do you want to describe the smell for those people that are watching at home? It smells like beef and pepper. No onion? Um, a little bit of onion, yeah. So it smells like beef, pepper, onion. Can you smell flour? No. Oh, wow. I wouldn't want to be smelling flour as it's cooking. So that's probably a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, it's looking uh, next, we add stock and tomatoes. So, what we've done is we've made this earlier, and uh, we have 150 millilitres here of beef stock. Cat uh, used a whole stock cube with 150 millilitres. She's not sure if that was right. Yeah, it might be too much, but, but we're hoping. So I'm going to add this in. There we go. And then the next step is to add tomatoes which is so okay here's the thing right in the recipe it says 397 gram can of chopped tomatoes including juice which is a very specific amount um and the can that we've got is 400 grams so as i say it's just a guide so we're just going to do the whole 400 gram can uh and not worry about that extra three grams doesn't matter does it no so we open that up carefully very carefully you could cut yourself on a on a can i'm just going to pour this in there we go i'm just going to mix that around a little bit but that's not everything that, that has to go in uh, we've got a couple more things one of the things we forgot to get out, I think, which is the paprika. Did I say that right? <laughs> paprika. Papri no. Paprika. Papri that's what I said. No, you said paprika. Say it again. You said par. I don't even know what you said, but it was not paprika. Paprika. <laughs> am, I am I saying it right? Paprika. We've got here smoked paprika. Sure. Still sounds like you're saying it wrong. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and what we want is two teaspoons of that. Um, so, here's a teaspoon. Uh, I'm going to open that up and put in. Oh, blimey. All right, here we go. As you can see, I'm being quite smart here. I'm doing it over the, the wok. So, if any spills, it's not really wasted. That's Just probably about it. Bit of extra paprika. Yeah, exactly. It's quite a smart little tip to, to save on having to clean up later with later woods later. <laughs> That's two. Done with that. Um, Anything else? Paprika. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just want to stir that in before yeah, I course. get to the next, yeah. the next bit. Very smart. Thank you. I don't hear that very often when I'm cooking. Do I? Praise when it's due. Hmm. Um, so the next step is two tablespoons of tomato puree. Now, Kat's already given me a bit of a warning that the tomato puree can be tricky. It just leaks. Um, I'm gonna need another tablespoon now. Oh, I could probably use the oil one, right? Um, I... Mm, All right, I'll use a new one then. I'm trying to save washing it, up. The oil will sort of congeal and, yeah. Chef Liam, top tip, save washing up where you can. I should probably start numbering these top tips. Why is the bottle so sticky? What's happened I here? told you, it leaks. Right, okay. So... It's how, a bit grim. How... Just... I'm just going to squirt and hope. Yeah. Seems like a good tactic for life. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's, that's a, a tablespoon. Lot. That's... Okay, yeah. Another tablespoon? Yeah. That's the two tablespoons. There you go. Done. Do I need that a little bit? Mm, I don't know. You decide. No, it's not coming off, so I don't want it. <laughs> I only want food that's going to cooperate with me, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, I'm going to stir that a little bit. And now what I need to do... Right, here's the interesting part. And here's where this, this really could be the, the make or break of this recipe. I'm going to try and pull in some of the bits from the edges, there we go, so that they're covered. What's the next part? So, what you're supposed to do 
at this stage mm -hmm. is add in, I'm just gonna wash my hands quickly. Uh, you're supposed to add in a bouquet garni. Now, I don't know what a bouquet garni is. It's, um, it's uh, basically a bouquet or bouquet of different fresh herbs. Right, and I don't know what it's supposed to do here because one of the later steps, if you do have a bouquet garni, bouquet garni, you just take it out. You just take it out. What's the point? I don't understand. But uh, we don't have one, so we're missing out on all those lovely herbs that should be infusing. I mean, you can just add some mixed herbs in if you want, but you won't be able but to take them out. Yeah, then I can't take them out. Oh dear. So we're going to go without. I've checked with, with mum. She said it should be fine. She didn't sound overly confident when I was asking her this. But we're just going to find out, aren't we? Yeah. So what I need to do at this point, so if you're following along and you've chopped in the bouquet garni, good for you, well done. Um, wow. Then it says, what? That was a lot of sass. Are you jealous if people can get a bouquet garni? I'm jealous that they've got a helper that's got them all the right ingredients they've asked for. Um, so then we bring it, well, it says season to taste. What does that mean? Because I'm not going to start tasting this. Well, I would just leave it then. Well, or add a little bit of salt and pepper, but if you're not going to test it, then... I'm going to add a little bit, but I don't, I don't want to taste it. It's, it's too early. We're cooking this at like midday. It's too early to be tasting it. I'm going to taste a bit for lunch. No. I haven't eaten yet today and I don't want this to be the first thing I eat because I feel like it's going to set a weird template for the rest of the day. Right. I'm sure that'll be fine. Uh, once you do start cooking a lot, you'll probably be able to just like guess a lot of things and it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my top tip. Good tip. Oh, careful. So I'm just going to stir that all in and then I need to bring it to the boil. So would you like to explain for those watching at home, what that means. Do you mean explain for you? Yeah. You just turn the heat up. Oh, okay, come on then, let's turn the heat up. It's getting hot in here. Woo! It's boiling now, is that done? If it's bubbling, does that mean it's boiling? Or do we wait for all of it to bubble, not just this I'd corner? wait for a few more bubbles, but I'd maybe also just not have it all the way up, just on a high heat, there we go. All right. And then I'd leave it to do it, have you scraped down the sides? Looks like you've got some rogue bits. You want to just make Careful. sure you don't have too many side rogue bits when you're cooking, according to Cat. Yeah, you want them to get involved, don't you? Sure. Okay. What if they don't want to get involved? Tough. Okay. Right, there we go. Um, so we're just going to let that boil for a little bit. And then we're going to transfer it to the slow cooker. Any tips or advice on how we get uh, it from this wok into the soap? So, if I open this up, it's this bit inside, isn't it? No, I haven't put the pot in yet. Oh, I, I need the pot, Catherine. Can you hold the camera then? Thank you. you yeah, the that's pot. the pot I need. We used the pot last night, didn't we? I don't know. Yeah, for our roast potatoes. Okay, I don't know how these things get made, I just know that I eat them. I was not prepared to be on camera. That's alright. Sometimes I think it's better to not know how the sausage is made. What do you think? What are you on about? Well, like with pancakes, for example, I think if I knew how to make pancakes, it would completely remove the oh, you mystery mean, you of don't them. Know how to make roast potatoes. Yeah, and, and in right. knowing how to do it. Like, here's one of the things. I just got a quick aside. Careful where you're aiming that camera. No, I'm... <laughs> here's one of the things we're cooking that I personally find. Um, things that I've cooked because that's, I... That's probably ready, by the way. Because I know how much time and effort goes into it, it completely kills the enjoyment of eating it. Uh, I much prefer when things are made for me. Of course you do. And then it's all just like a nice mystery and it's sort of like, oh, how did this happen? I don't know. It's just magic. It's just my opinion. Right, I'm gonna. Oh, it's quite heavy. Mm. I'm gonna take this over here. We've got to try and transfer it into this pot somehow without making a mess everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So you I'm might want to use out. like a spoon or something rather than a slotted. I was just gonna tip. Okay, well, good luck with that. Thank you. 
It smells nice. Watch out for splashing. Yeah. But I think that worked remarkably well. Yeah. If you want to take a look inside, you can see it's just been splashed in there, lovely. Just, just a lot of splash. There was a lot of splash, yeah. Yeah, you might want to use the thing to move that around so it's a bit more evenly spread. I'm coming back with it. You don't need to bring the water. I didn't want to, like... No spillage. Yeah. I see. Yeah, give that a little spread around. There you go. Okay. I'm not going to say what it reminded me of when I was pouring it, because... This is a cooking show and we don't want those sorts of thoughts in our head. But I will say to toilet bowl and I'll just leave it there. Lovely. So uh, we put in the slow cooker. Yeah, so pop the pot back in. Have you got the right lid on it this time? Uh, the lid is next to it. So do you want me to do this bit? Because I don't think you know how. Yeah, that's accurate. So, okay, so you take that again. I'm so this over. is the like pressure and slow cooker lid, so it goes on, but it has like a certain, there we go, and then we have to make sure it's on seal, which it is. So this bit over here? Yeah, it's on seal, yeah? Yeah. Do you want me to set it up? Yeah, might as well. Okay, so we turn it on. Yeah, it beeps. It, it beeps, yeah, and then make we Make sure we put it on slow, slow but we want it on low, not high. Low. Yeah. And time. Seven hours? Yeah, ready? Yeah, it's five past twelve now, so it'll be ready at five past seven tonight. Okay. And that's how that's done. Mm -hmm. So now what do we do? We... We sing the song. Oh, do you want me to set the camera back there? Oh, do you want to sing the no. song? I'll take that. You set the camera back there. And now we sing the song. Cooking with Leon Here in the kitchen Cooking with Liam. Hi everyone and welcome back to Cooking with Liam. It's now several hours later. Uh, the time is 6.34pm. Uh, as you can see on the slow cooker, we've still got a little bit over half an hour to go. However, uh, camera lady operator Kat is feeling hungry. I'm so... hungry. We're going to speed this up a little bit and we'll stop the slow cooker a little bit early. So the next part of this beef goulash is we're going to cook some fresh pasta. As you can see, I've, I've already got it in this uh, saucepan. Saucepan? No, is it a saucepan? Yes. Cool, it's a saucepan. Is it a saucepan or a saucepan? Either. Okay. Um, so this is the amount of fresh pasta that we think we want. We're just boiling the kettle right now. Once that's boiled, we'll put it over the pasta and then we are going to have sour cream with this. Uh, you could also have beef goulash with rice if you fancy that instead of pasta. Uh, so all we're going to do now, we've got a spoon ready. As soon as that kettle pops... I'm sorry, what? Pops. What would you say? Boils. Has boiled. Yeah, but the little thing goes pop, doesn't it? The thing, the flip, the, the, the switch just flips. This thing. Yeah, okay. It goes pop. And then you're like, oh, kettle's ready. Okay. Um, so this fresh pasta, we don't think is going to take long to cook, do we? No, it usually takes like five minutes. I haven't washed my hands yet. Disgusting. So I'm going to wash my hands, because that's important. Now, here's my question about washing hands when cooking. If you're not actually touching food, like, for example, now, I'm just going to touch, like, a, a, pot, a can handle and a spoon. How important is washing your hands, Catherine? I mean, not as important as if you were handling food. Well, incorrect. Chef Lee, top tip, he always says when cooking, always wash your hands. Yeah, but always. like I, it's a recommendation to always wash your hands. But if you're going to be touching food, then you definitely should. Yeah. Wash your hands. But the chef Liam top tip, what is it? Always wash your hands. Always wash your hands. Okay. 
So now I've got clean hands ready for touching spoons and handles. Very good. Is it necessary? I don't know. I'm not a professional chef. I'm just kind of figuring this out as I go along with some guidance from Catherine. This is now our second time using the slow cooker. How's it smelling? It's smelling very nice. Do you want to describe the smell for... I mean, you ask me this every time. It, it yeah. smells like beef goulash. And what does that smell like? Like, if someone's never had beef goulash before, and they've, they've seen us making this so far, and they're thinking, oh, I wonder what that's going to be like. How would you describe the smell? Um... Beefy. Yeah. <laughs> it smells like beef. Yeah. And goulash. Brilliant. So now you know how arbitrary it is when you ask me to describe the spell. Don't worry about it. It so smells like the sum of its ingredients. What you want to do with the boiling water that we've just boiled is just pour it over the pasta so that it covers the pasta. Is that about enough, would we say? Or a uh, little bit more? A tiny bit more. You gotta do a tiny bit more. There we go, that's plenty. That's absolutely plenty now. Now what do we do? We turn this on. Well done. And you want that at quite a high heat, I think. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have it all the way up. Just turn it down slightly. Is sure, that better? Sure, that's fine. That's better. And then with your spoon, just give it a little stir because you don't want the pasta to uh, get stuck. Now, what you could do while you're doing this, because um, this doesn't require a lot of attention, uh, so you could make drinks. Are you setting a timer? No. Okay. Well, it's a couple of minutes, isn't it? Like five minutes. Five? Yeah. I thought it was a couple. No, five. Oh, I set time in it. I thought it was like literally two or three minutes. No, I mean, the pa the water's not even boiling yet, so... I thought... No, five, at least five minutes. Oh. Yeah. But, you know, that's a good amount of time to make some drinks. I'll do it for four, because it's already been going for about a minute. Um, so, Catherine, what are you drinking? I'll have a, a squash with ice, please. And I'll have a water with ice. So, this is something that you can do. Uh, you can make a variety of drinks while cooking. Anything that you can make comfortably within four minutes is a good idea. So maybe... No extravagant cocktails then. Yeah, and maybe like teas, coffees, you might be pushing it a little bit. But also, why are you having a tea or coffee with dinner? It's weird, isn't it? Yes. I mean, I don't drink tea or coffee, so I wouldn't know. If it's weird. I mean, I do drink tea and I think that's weird. Tea is more of a after, or coffee is more of an after dinner. You heard it here first. And when's tea? I mean, for me, tea is in the morning or around that 3 p.m. slump when you need caffeine. Okay. You heard it here first. So, as you can see, to make the water with ice, all I've done is put ice in a glass and then added, uh, in this case, um, Evian water well on done. top of that. Yeah. Now, the squash, a mm -hmm. little bit more complicated. Uh, again, you take a glass, put some ice in it, then we've got Robinson's Real Fruit in Every Drop Orange Squash. And this is the bit where there's not really a science to it. You just hope for the best. So I like to do probably about that much for Catherine. Mm -hmm. um, other people, depending on how strong they want it, might want more, might want less. And then what you do, there's a little bit of water left in this bottle. So we're going to finish that off. We'll put that in the recycling because recycling is important. We'll open up the new bottle. Does that look about right? Yes. And that's how you make uh, squash with ice or water with ice. We replace the water that we just used in the fridge. Drinks are made. Now we check the timer. Come with me. We're going to give it a little stir first because, you know, we don't want the pasta getting all sticky. It's starting to bubble and stuff, so that's uh, promising. We 
we have one minute and 15 seconds left. So what I'm going to do now, um, here's the thing when you're cooking and you've already done most of it and you've got the odd minute to kill here or there, there's always something in the kitchen that you can do. Um, so first I'm going to put this empty packet in the bin. Just keeping a clean, tidy kitchen. Oh, here we go. I've had to touch the bin lid. Is that shut? Yes. I've got to wash my hands again. Uh, keeping a, a, a Please, tidy... for the love of God, use some soap. No, I'm using soap. What sort of animal do you think I am? Touching the bin lid and then not using soap while I'm on camera? Come on. I mean... I lead by example. Why specifically on camera? Surely you should still do it, even if you're not on camera. You think so, wouldn't you? I really would. I'd um, hope. What was that? I'd hope so. Well, um, keeping a clean and tidy kitchen means that you have a happy Catherine. Yes. Uh, also means she's not often happy, quite honestly. Yeah, because you're always making a bloody mess. Exactly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two plates out, ready for dishing up. And Are we going to have it in plates or bowls? Oh, okay. Um, would you prefer bowls? Well, it's pasta, so do you not want to use the pasta bowls? I'd absolutely love to use the pasta bowls. Now, as you maybe have noticed, uh, in some of the previous Cooper and Beer episodes, things get a bit chaotic and a bit manic around this time as everything starts to get done and we pull it all together. Not today. We're just going to be nice and calm. We're just going to take our time with it, aren't we? Sure. What's the worst that could happen? So, the time is gone. Is this pasta ready? It's been about five minutes. Why don't you use the spoon to lift some of it out and see if it looks ready? Yeah, that, 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 looks, looks, that looks ready. How do you know the pasta looks ready? Well, it, it looks or feels soft. Cool. All right, so for someone who's not really cooked before, um, that's your advice to know if pasta's ready. It looks or feels soft. So we're going to need the uh, colander, as Catherine has provided here. Thank you very much. And then we're going to just going to make it safe at the sink to to sort this out. Safe enough. Um, safety first when you're cooking, very important, especially when you're dealing with boiling hot water, because a bit of splashing water really burnt me badly last time, and it hurt a lot. So going to be nice and careful with it. I'm not going to go crazy because today it's all about cooking calmly as it should always be but quite often isn't because cooking is difficult and stressful. Is this enough pasta do you reckon? Yeah. All right so do you think that the best way of dishing this up pasta in the bowl first mm -hmm. beef goulash over the top? Yes. Uh, all right so pasta in the bowl this will be yours. Is that enough? No. <laughs> Is that enough? A little bit more. Well, what am I going to have? The rest of that. All right. Wait. See, look, now you're suddenly like, oh, I've got some extra there. Don't give me all the rest. You're going to want a bit more. There you go. That's probably fine, isn't it? Yeah, that's plenty. I don't know what you're on about. Uh, I'm just cooking. I'm cooking right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Now we need to turn off the slow cooker. How are you going to do that? I'm going to push this button in. Yeah, give it a go. Doesn't work on the slow cooker, does it? Um, no. So I'm going to push this button. Mm -hmm. It says bye. It's very polite. Is that done? Have I turned it off? Yeah. Um, so now what do you do? Twist it. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. And then carefully lift it because it's going to have condensation, isn't it? Shall I push it over here? Yeah. Oof. Right, if you want to have a look at that, see how that's looking. Mm. How's that looking? Yeah. Maybe you a bit watery, sound, sound. but... We'll see once you give it a oh, stir. I'm sure it'll be fine. So, I need to get this out of the ninja, don't I? Mm-hmm. You're probably going to want to put it over there so you can serve it with the pasta. Yeah. 
Make sure you've got room for it. So I've just done there, just made room by moving my phone out of the way. Very good. Got my oven gloves on. Mm -hmm. So again, when you're dealing with hot things, just be careful, be smart, wear oven gloves. Um, when it's appropriate, obviously. What are you struggling with? How to hold it. That'll do. Yeah. It's fine, don't worry about it. Okay. So now, I don't want two oven gloves on. No. I've left the wrong one on though, because I'm right handed. And I need a spoon for dishing this out really, don't I? Yeah, I mean, you could use a ladle. Uh, now, I believe this is a ladle. Correct. See? I know some things. And then you just dish it out like this, don't you? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, as we say every single week, presentation is everything when it comes to cooking. Uh, so we're going to be very careful and present it nicely. Just like this. That's probably enough for you, isn't it? Yeah, that's plenty for me. How much is left, is it? There's loads left. Well, why don't you be sensible and we can freeze some of it? <sighs> Just, is that... Is that a thing you can do? There's loads left, isn't there? Yeah, we can freeze it. Obviously, once it's all cooled down, you put it in a container and you put it in the freezer. And then how do you heat it back up? Just reheat it on the hob. Okay. So the good thing about uh, uh, the amount that we've used today, um, how many people? I mean, it was say... like it was like eight hundred grams of beef. There was always yeah. going to be some. How many that... people would you say that's suitable for then? Four. Four, yeah. Four servings. Yeah. So this is a great meal if you want like two lots of, of meals out of it. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing, so I'm just going to move this out of the way because I'm, I'm paranoid that... You're going to get hurt. I'm going to accidentally touch it. Yeah. Because that bowl's right next to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so where should I move this to? Put it back over in, over here. There you go. I'm just going to leave that there. Yeah. And I'll put the gloves up here. So the last stage, Sour cream. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, yeah, 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 it was behind things. Now, here's a Chef Liam top tip. Uh, sometimes, uh, when you're looking for things inside, like fridges, freezers, cupboards, sometimes things will be behind other things. So when you first take a look, you might not notice that immediately, and you have to move things yeah. out of the way. Instead of over explaining things, could you just serve our dinner? Do you want a spoon? What size spoon? <laughs> what for the sour cream? Mm. Just a tablespoon. Tablespoon? Yeah. Got a tablespoon. Um, okay, so here we've got sour cream. I'm just going to open it up like that. Carefully. Very carefully. Uh, how much sour do you, Does it need to stir in or anything like that? Give it just a little stir in case it's the water separated. No, it's quite thick. Okay, yeah. How much do you want? Is that enough? Is that um, too much? Is that no, mad? that's 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 good. Pour that. I love sour cream, so. More. That's probably fine. Do a little bit more for me. Oh well, if you're having more, then I want more. I think that was probably fine. No, it was because you were going on about how that's, big that portion that's done. was. Bon appetit. Wait, is that all you're having? Because that's significantly less when you said you were going to have more. I've put the spoon in the sink now, so yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why you did that, but okay. Cool. You can put that back in the fridge now. And that's how you do it. So we'll be back shortly for the taste test, um, which is Cat's favourite part. What happens next usually? We don't normally have time to sing. We're normally too stressed and and, okay. and manic. Is that I can it sing then? if you want though. No, it's fine. Just knives, just forks. Forks are fine. Forks are fine. Okay, we're here to taste test the beef goulash recipe by Karen Underwood. I don't know if it's a family recipe or anything. I might have just revealed the secrets to the internet. <laughs> Who knows? So are you going to stick it in your mouth or? Yeah, I just a... Mm. Have a bit of pesto as well. 
I mean, I know what type of pasta tastes yeah, like. Yeah, but not the way I cook it. Mmm. Right, well, that's an enlightening verdict. It's very nice. All right, my turn. Mm hmm. So it's very nice. I think so. According to Cat Fison. Um, I'm just going to have a bit of pasta here. Bit of beef. It's not bad. Well, that's not a glowing review. I feel like when we've had it in the past, it's been there's been more flavour to it. Yeah, maybe, but maybe you just need a bit more sauce on it. I forgot to mention, um, when you take it off of the slow cooker, if you do have a bouquet garni, okay. at that point, you take it out. And maybe that's what this is missing. I don't know. Maybe. Um, it's but it's it's fine. It's, it's, it's nice enough. So, as always, uh, have good time cooking. Always.